few months ago I started playing golf again, but I decided I was done schlepping my own clubs around like a brute. I needed a golf cart. See that? That's freedom. If you eat at Applebee's and watch the prices right, I guarantee you have dreamt about one of these baddies in the last five to seven days. Unfortunately, freedom like this costs money, uh, which I don't have. So, just like that, the golf push cart and I had a date with destiny. Surely a golf push cart couldn't be that expensive, I thought to myself. It was at this point that I started to lower my expectations. And where is the first place you go when you lower your expectations? Facebook Marketplace. I found this little guy, but it looked more like a polio era medical device than a respectable push cart fit for the links. Down the rungs, I climbed until I arrived at OfferUp, also known as the WWWWW, the Wild West of the World Wide Web. About the time that this gem showed up, I realized I was not going to find the perfect push cart. I would have to make it. I had three requirements for the golf cart of my dreams. Number one, it had to be sturdy. Number two, I wanted it to look totally different than anything you'd ever expect to see at a golf course. I think it's time for the working class to stick it to the man and the country club bourgeoisie and take our rightful place on the fairway. Last but not least, number three, it had to fold so that it would fit in the shallow bosom of my Honda Civic. And so it began, like any other successful endeavor throughout history, with pressure-treated lumber. Using a miter box was fun to a certain extent, but it was actually really hard to get truly square edges on my cuts. The slots for cutting have a good amount of play, and so a lot of my cuts ended up being off square, which made the rest of the build much harder. There were so many points during this build that I thought, I wish I had a powered miter saw. Once I had all the pieces of the frame cut, uh, I did something that I don't think anybody in the history of mankind has ever done, which was I routed and sanded my 2x4s. Um, I think most of that was just because I was excited to have and use a router. Um, and you know, this thing, uh, th this golf cart's gonna go down in history, at least by my estimation. And uh, yeah, I want it to look half decent. There's something to be said for letting the natural appearance of wood speak for itself. I don't think that really applies to framing lumber, but I mean, what do you think? Did I make the wrong decision in painting over this? Let me know in the comments if your team flat black or if your team natural two by fours. All right, so it was now time to create an axle. I purchased a three foot long steel rod unthreaded and then just cut it down to size using a rotary tool. And then I sanded down all of the sharp edges to make sure I wouldn't cut my finger when checking for sharp edges. I then attached the shaft to one of my 2x4s using conduit clamps. Putting a conduit clamp on the edge like this gave that interior washer and the wheel a much more rigid surface to sit against. And I kept everything secure with a shaft collar and did the same thing on the other side. The reason I had to attach the shaft to a 2x4 was to create a connection surface for this part of the frame that would run vertically up to the main body of the push cart. And I attached this vertical bar using a foldable clamp to make sure I could fold the wheels away in case I needed that extra space in my trunk. For the front wheel, I cut off another piece of that steel rod to make an axle. I attached it to the frame, again using conduit clamps, but this time they were slightly modified. Basically, I just folded them over to make sure they could screw into perpendicular surfaces of the 2x4. This is how it turned out. 
I now needed to attach this part of the frame to the rear part of the frame, the part with two wheels, and I did that using angle brackets like this. Here I started checking for square, you know, making sure that my build was up to the proverbial code. It wasn't, uh, but I was a little past the stage of caring to fix it. As you can tell, I installed another one of those folding brackets on the main part of the frame uh, to ensure I could fit it in my trunk. At the end of a long day of work, looking out over my progress, I was filled with nothing short of gratitude and elation. I was well on my way to the golf pushcart of my dreams. With the primary structure complete, I had to start thinking about how I was going to support a heavy bag of golf clubs. Once again, the answer was two by fours. Here I'm making the arms that will grasp the sides of my golf bag to prevent it from jostling around as I traverse the golf course. I measured these to perfectly match the diameter of the bottom and top of my golf bag. I ended up only installing the top set of arms, but I would soon find out that I definitely needed that bottom bracket as well. I made a ton of mistakes in this build. You know, I was really just going with gut instinct and a passion for the arts and uh, that can only get you so far. In my next video, I'll be showing how I basically rebuild this thing from the ground up. So if you wanna see that, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. The final part of this build was to create a handle. Off camera, I painted this piece black and then used wood screws to attach it to the main part of the frame. I then used my only saw to cut a 12 inch piece of PVC. Now, as you watch the next couple seconds unfold, just know that at this point in my life, I did not know what hanger bolts were. So I cut the heads off of these carriage bolts and then I used a little super glue because again, at this point, I did not know there was something that could go into wood on one side and accept a stop nut on the other. It might look like these are going in a little bit crooked. Um, that's not just the angle of the camera, uh, it's because they were crooked. As you can tell, I painted that 12 inch piece of PVC and then slid on these two styrofoam type grips that are typically reserved for motorcycles, but um, they're serving a higher purpose in this application. And just like that, she was seaworthy. As you will soon observe, loading this thing into my trunk, despite all of the work I went through, was not going as I planned. But after considerable cajoling and rearranging, we were in business. For sturdiness, I give it three out of five stars. Punk aesthetic, definitely five out of five. And foldability, two out of five. Look, there's uh, a lot of room for improvement on this bad boy, so make sure you're subscribed because I'll be coming out with another video where I fix everything that needs to be changed. And for those of you that are curious, here's a cost breakdown. All in, this thing cost me $117, money well spent. See you next time.